Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to what I believe will be probably the last video in the series of the uh, guitar to radio interface. I, um, in the previous video, did the adjustments or the alterations to the schematic that I wanted to do to include a gain stage on here. It's actually a distortion stage from the uh, very, very famous Tube Screamer. And um, that mess over there is the result of the experimentation. And this is the new set of boards that I received. So let's have a look at them. Now, once again, this video is sponsored by PCBWay, where I got the boards. And let's see what we've got. Some more goodies. Always welcome. And here are the boards. I will be building a few of these because I know some friends of mine have asked me for them, provided this one works well, obviously. So um, yeah, let's open this up and see what we've got. And here we are, five boards. Five boards from PCB Way. Once again, as they've got me quite accustomed to the quality, it's bloody perfect. And I don't think I made a mistake this time. I think it's all correct. Look at that. Beautiful. So if you're planning on doing some uh, PCB projects, do the designs on your favorite PCB software. Go on to the website pcbway.com and order your boards. The quality is exceptional, the price is amazing, and the turnaround time is faster than you could ever think of doing them at home. I know, I've tried. Let's get on with this. I'm going to build this, probably not uh, bore you too, too much with the build video itself, and when we get to the end, we'll see what we've got. And here we are. We've got everything soldered on this side of the board. I reused some of the components that I had on the uh, previous board, things like the jacks, the caps, the, in fact, the IC socket. Most of these components were reused. Don't like to waste. And it seems that everything is done on this side. Now, this is what I meant when I was talking about making the uh, diodes switchable or switch outable. You see, what I've got there is actually sockets. Those little guys are sockets. And it means that I can very simply remove this diode or any of the distortion elements. Just pull it out. I can put in a different diode. I can remove it. I can remove one and not the other and get asymmetrical clipping. I can put in LEDs. It makes it very handy. I did this with um, some of those uh, pedals that I did because musicians are notoriously fickle about their tone and um, most of the time when you want to shape a tone on a pedal it's got to do with the choice of a diode, it's got to do with the choice of a particular capacitor or you know the amount of gain. So um, I built some of those with options like this where you leave uh, socketed option on there and that's what I'm doing here. Now this side is done but the other side is not and uh, other than just cleaning this with a bit of isopropyl this thing came out beautifully. Very very nice. I made the um, component holes in other words the you know, the solder holes, a little bit bigger than usual. 
for this board. So it's become a lot easier to solder. Solder flows very well on these boards, that's not a problem. Now let me tell you what the challenge is with putting this on, the components on this side. This is the case, the enclosure that I'll be using. And what will happen is that everything will be in reverse. So this will be the top. And that means that this board fits in like that with the um, pots coming out the bottom. Not only the pots, but also the LED and the switch. So these things will be fitted like that. And that means that the holes will be made on this side for the tone controls and level controls and gain controls. But more importantly, it tells us that we have to fit these components like that. However, you've got to be careful because if you fit them like that, you're going to short out components on the underside. This one practically doesn't have any, but if you look at this guy here, there's that IC on the bottom. And if you put a pot like that and it touches, it shorts it out. So what I do is I use one of these things. These are those feet you can get square ones, you can get uh, round ones, doesn't really matter. I suppose I should use round ones on here. But if I do that, then I can quite comfortably put this here, solder this there, and it'll never short. And it just means that my spacing there needs to be suitably adjusted. So I put that on there first, and then I will solder them. And I'll do the same to all of them. And I've also checked with a switch. This particular switch isn't exactly the right one for this. This is one with the uh, solder tags. We should get one with the PC pins. But I have done this before and I'm sure that I'll be able to solder that there. And then we've got to make sure that that level there and that level there are about the same. Because remember, this thing is going to go and fit against the uh, part of the enclosure. But it actually works quite well because these pins are sticking out here and I need a bit of height on here. Everything fits nicely. The other thing we've got to be taking into account is that the LED actually goes on here. Got to get the polarity right. And the LED has to sort of be at the same height as well. So, you know, there's a little bit of experimentation on here. But I've done this before and it's not that difficult. I'm now going to solder, clean the board with isopropyl and then solder these components on this side. And then we'll be able to test it before we finally start marking out and drilling out the, uh, the enclosure. And then you'll be happy to know I've already arranged for a friend of mine who's a guitar teacher. Um, he teaches guitar at the music school and um, he's going to be able to demonstrate it for us. So you're probably going to be relieved that you won't have to hear my atrocious playing or out-of-tune guitar much, much longer. Right, let me get on with this. And we are done. And we are done. Everything connected in here, everything soldered in here. As you can see, the uh, pads on the underside there will isolate the uh, chassis of the actual pot from any components on the back, preventing short circuits. The uh, LED has been placed in the right height. Now these pots, because of the height of this uh, switch, I am putting these pots with a, uh, a nut. Is that what it's called? A nut on there, so it's raised a bit more. It's got to do with the height of that switch. That switch should go down lower. But uh, never mind, it's all fitting quite nicely. And what I've got to just point out here, these pots have a little um, protrusion over here, which is used when you want to fit it onto a front panel. I clip, I break that off, that's just iron, so they break off quite easily just with the pliers, and it makes the whole thing straight. Now, what have I done wrong? <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously, I've done something wrong. 
not serious, but um, something I would probably do differently. And you might have noticed that uh, when I was just developing the design, I've used these boards or similar boards on these pedals. And on the pedals, I never used soldered pots. I always used pots that um, would connect to the casing and then I would take three wires and solder them. It does have its advantages in that um, what happens is the there's more stress relief when you're plugging in and, plug in and unplugging. Now the, the pedals that I made are for guys who do this professionally so they're always plugging things in and unplugging and putting stress on there so the solder connections can break. With the ones that you actually um, wire to the board there's a certain amount of stress relief so those wires never break. The fact that I use these is because I like the size, I like the whole idea of just plugging this in, fitting this in, and there is a problem and I could have done it exactly like this provided I had different types of sockets. Now you do get sockets that don't have that protrusion. Um, they're flush, they're actually flush over here and you can see that on all those pedals that have a socket on the left and a socket on the right and the whole thing just plugs in. Now there's no protrusion so when you're putting this in there's no obstruction to going into the casing and then the uh, when you sc screw on the head it goes into the socket at the back. That's what I should have used here and that's what you can use here. Alternatively what I've done and as you can see the, the, uh, the actual case has been drilled. I marked out the holes, drilled them. There's the LED one. I've done this because I have a problem fitting this into the casing or I had a problem when I first tried. Let me show you. This thing goes in like that and when you put it in here, if you try to put it in with these, uh, with just a hole on here, you cannot actually get that in and the pots in the bottom at the same time. So you've got to choose to do something like I've done here or use the other pots. Now other than that, This thing fits quite well. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. And I can just make sure these are coming through. And they are. And the LEDs come through nicely there. Eh, probably a little bit too high. I might drop that just a little bit. And now these things fit in like that and I can just tighten them. And it's not a problem. Now I'm just going to put those on. One more just note, the battery at the back here, as I said, I used a battery. I could have used a DC supply and you can still put one on maybe on the side here. I uh, actually just uh, stuck the battery into the, the enclosure with uh, double sided tape. <laughs> I'm being optimistic that this thing won't drain too quickly. I don't think it will, but um, everything else fits nicely. The cover fits on nicely. Let me just put these guys on and then I'll show you the final result. All done. Put the knobs on. Everything seems to fit quite well. I now just need to put the uh, plug the battery in. Make sure you get the right polarity in here. There we go. There's still one task outstanding and that is to uh, label this. Now there's so many ways of doing it and you know what my favorite is? See this? Just do it. This is my, what is this, input? Damn, can't remember. Oh, there's one way to find out. The one that switches on the light, that's our input. So that's our signal coming in here. That is our gain. And of course this is distortion. And this is our clean. And there we have it. Ha! Brilliant. No more graphics needed. This one's done. And if I plug in my guitar, a light comes on, unplug it, it goes off. Now, as I said, as I promised, 
I'm going to save you having to listen to my atrocious playing. I'm getting a friend to do a demo and let's see what he can make of this thing.